Now I see all of you. Really. Wow, amazing. <laughs> you Technology. Look, you look better without your, um, how you say it, your boots. Your, without uh, your COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Are you healed from the COVID already? Mm, not quite, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh i still got a bit of a cough but um yeah i'm I, i'm i'm okay now i'm okay now yeah you know you, do you know how you got it yeah my my girlfriend works in a hospital so um she yeah it's like it's spreading like quite a lot in the hospital and there's lots of old people so she she got it from there and then she she had to come home and uh and isolate and then well you know i yeah. wasn't getting away from it so yeah, yeah so she your girlfriend ruined your rainbow jersey <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that maybe that was just team gb man <laughs> yeah. Uh, so maybe a quick round of introductions. We start. We can start with Ed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm 26 years of age. Uh, I've been riding the bike for 10 years or so now. I did race for um, continental teams uh, on the professional circuit for a few years. Um, I was two-time British champion, uh, and now I'm a, a Zwifter and I guess a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> and um which which uh, category were you was it under 23 that you were a british champion uh yeah under 23 british road race champion and then british hill climb champion uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, 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 checked, checked, I, I checked i checked and we uh we did we did some races together in france um you probably uh but yeah victor knows me but probably ed doesn't uh I'm Jeff. I'm uh, actually Victor's best buddy, and um, I'm also uh, the guy who gave him the idea to start a YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I you we're going to say I'm also the guy that took away all his pleasure out of sports. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna go into that any deeper. Um, no, but um, I used to race bikes myself. Uh, I was pro in uh, the top sport squad uh, for two years. Uh, then I turned triathlete, and then COVID happened, and uh, yeah, now I'm in, in between figuring out what I'm uh, what I'm gonna do next myself. And you don't need introductions, Victor. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna skip we're gonna skip we're gonna skip that I'll, part. I'll do a quick introduction. I am Victor, and I was enjoying cycling until I met Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he made me uh, think about food all the time, food, like think about not eating anymore. And then uh, I lost all the pleasure, pleasure, pleasure in cycling, and also started to uh, to get some good results at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I helped him on his, I put him on his way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> put him on the tracks. Um, yeah, we used to live together also, and then but that's a, that's a, another story. Um, so Ed, um, Victor is preparing for the World Championships esports. Uh, it's the first time that that it's happening, so it's a it's a pretty big deal. We think um, it's probably with the future of cycling, and um, yeah, we were wondering why is Ed Laverick the go-to guy if you want to know more about Zwift. I appreciate that. Um, well, to be honest, I, I really enjoy Zwift racing. Uh, I really enjoy what it's done for uh, cycling this year and how it's um, like helped a lot of us out, I think. But um, I, I race a lot on Zwift um, and I live stream most of it as well, uh, the racing and the training. So um, you get to see you know what goes into the race results a lot of the time. Um, but I also... Um, like to talk tactics at the end of the live stream and just kind of if the race has ended in a sprint or if the race has ended in a breakaway or something um, I like to talk about that at the end so that people feel like they they know what's gone into um, gone into that but I, I've I've raced the British um, British uh, Zwifting Championships in 2019 
Um, so yeah, I've got I've got a bit of experience. <laughs> What is it that, that makes you such a good Swift rider? And why uh, are you not uh, the same level in road cycling? Um, I think they're two different disciplines. Um, the the Zwift side of things is very much, if you know how to, uh, if you know the courses, you know, if you know where to attack, um, if you know the climbs and obviously watts per kilo plays a big part in that because you, you're not, um, you know, there's no crosswinds, there's no portals, there's no um, roundabout, there's no road furniture. So it becomes uh, very basic in that sense. But um, I think I did have some good results out on the road. So I moved away from road racing for uh, professional continental teams about a year or so ago. But I raced the Tour of Japan and the Tour of Korea. Um, I was uh, top three under 23 in the Tour of Korea one year. So I've, I've raced a fair bit out, out, outdoors, but it feels like it's completely different indoors. But I really enjoy it. And that's probably why um, I managed to do you know quite well. Yeah, is that the, is that the, the main driver? Are you that your, your results on Zwift um, are better than on the, on the road just because you enjoy it more? Um, maybe, maybe a mixture of enjoyment and, um, just the ease of access. You can just jump on Zwift and just, you know, if you feel motivated, you can just go and race straight away. And because you can race so often as well, um, I think people notice you more. Uh, I know that since, um, since March, when I did the Alp de Zwift race, um, lots of people like picked up on me then uh because i did like six watts per kilo for 35 minutes or something and that that's nothing like that's the same power i've been doing the last couple of years but it's only because people were watching that and it was live streamed that i think you know it brought um the attention uh, and i think that's really interesting you know from a from a youtube perspective and from you know just a cycling perspective Yeah, if you look at the if you look at the commentaries on the on the live streams, the the commentators. I don't know if you've already seen some, Victor, but the commentators they love Ed. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so that that also helps, you know. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> And w what I wonder is, um, like, uh, it it will be special the World Championships because. Uh, if if you see you guys doing the racing, um, I think it will be nearly impossible to to beat uh, real Swifters, and we are uh, World Tour riders. Some of the best World Tour riders will be there, um, so probably our asses will be kicked. Um, don't you? And also, I know if you have to do 30 minutes, six watts per kilogram on the rollers, it's super hard. Do you sometimes feel like you deserve a spot in a in a in a world tour team or in a pro pro team? Um, no, and the reason why I say that is because I've had the experience racing on the road, and I know what it takes to race at that level. Um, I've raced with riders who have gone world tour, and I've raced with riders who have come down from world tour, and there's lots more, I mean, you know, you know, but there's lots, lots more to it than just power numbers. It's, you know, how, how you fit in with a team as a, as a person, how, um, you know, how, how you can bring results, how you can work for a team, how, how many bottles can you carry? <laughs> um, there's lots of things in that. And, um, you know, I, I, I like to think that, I've not got any worse in terms of like my power numbers and my riding, but I, I still, um, I still enjoy doing those power numbers, you know, whether it be on Zwift or, or outdoors on a training ride, you know, to me, it doesn't have to be a race. It can just be a training ride as well. Yeah. Because, uh, to be honest, if, if I would be, if I would be you, um, if you're looking pro cycling to perhaps Louis Manchins, he's really, really bad in racing in the peloton but he just sits in the back and he waits until uh, we hit the climb. climb yeah and then 
he starts totally in the back and, and there are gaps and people are dropping, but he just passes everybody and he sits on his numbers and he does good results. If I would be you, I would think I just have to, have to make sure I don't crash, go to the final, the bottom <laughs> of the final climb and then I sit on six watts per kilogram and, and get, a, get, a, get a World Tour victory wherever. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's that it is that easy. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, no, I. Um, and getting I, the chance to do that is really easy as well, you know. I, like, if if I would be able to do uh, six watts per kilogram for thirty five minutes on on the rollers, I think I would also be able to win a hilltop finish um, in the world to race. But I, I can't, I can't do both of them. I've raced, I've raced against riders who who race exactly like that. But we had a we had a team manager who always used to say that you have riders who, um, you know, they 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 they're so strong um, that they never have to use their head and they never have to ride at the front. They never have to fight for the wheel. They never have to you know be in that position. And and they they can get really far in cycling until they find themselves having to fight for that position, and then they don't get the results. Um, and then you have the riders who have who are almost like the reverse. They don't have the strength, so they have to fight. And because they've learned that, when they do get strong enough, they're able to do both. And then they're the ones that win the races. I think so. No, but but I I believe also that there's a uh, through future in Zwift racing or online racing. Um, there's going to be money there as well. But at this moment, it's just like, if you can hit the numbers you do on Zwift, you can make real good money in road racing. And um, do, do you make money out of Zwift racing at this moment? Um, not directly. Uh, the only money I make is uh, YouTube revenue through live streaming yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so, the, so the 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 premier leagues uh also there there there's no prize money um there is but it's it's hit and miss so some some of the races do have it but there's very few of them on the uh on the circuit at the minute that that do have that there could be teams I'm talking like one or two teams that pro that might pay their riders, but the expense, I don't know, the expense is quite small because if they get given uh, the rollers, the turbo um, and the bike and, you know, the, the computer, the fat, if they get given all of that, then they don't really have much uh, expense. Uh, they're not traveling to a race, you know, they're not going places. So I, it's, I think it's still like very small. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah okay but maybe uh maybe we go back to uh to the world to the world championships um i'd like to start a few questions uh for the the novice racers on zwifters not the novice zwifters but the novice racers on zwifter uh on zwift sorry um <clears throat> you've got the like a, a third party website that's uh zwift power um if you're not on zwift power then yeah you you're actually not racing on Zwift, are you? Um, <clears throat> yeah. How does how does you, you Zwift... register on uh, Zwift Power? Say again. Should you should you register yourself on Zwift Power? Uh, so I, I'm not on. <laughs> <laughs> so you start you start with you start with that, and now and then Ed is going to explain us how the how the ranking on Zwift Power works. Yes, yeah, Zwift Power is like, uh, I was trying to think of a way to explain it to a lot of people. Um, it's like pro cycling stats, uh, but for Zwift racing. Um, so you can find all your races on there. You can find even more detail on those races, like which courses they're going to be on. Um, you can even uh, find the race results and things like that, um, Team teams and riders and whatnot. But to the rankings in Zwift Power are kind of basically summarized by 
if you beat a rider who's ranked higher than you, you you gain a lot of points and you you move closer to that rider and possibly move in front of that rider. Um, definitely, when you're in the top ten in the world, um, you know the, the, they're always changing positions almost every time they race because there's no there's not one rider that dominates all the time, which is which is quite fun. And 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 how do you look for the races? Say say I'm uh, now ranked. I don't know how many guys there are on Swift Power, but say I'm now ranked uh, 5,000, um, and I want to move up to top thousand. Um, how would I see? Uh, how would I find the races that suit that purposes best? There is a there is a filter option at the top which um, you can filter the race by ranking, so it will give you like um, like a, a bar, and then the um, the more full that bar is, the the the, the tougher the competition in that race. Mm. Um, so that's a very easy way, way to way to see how how well stacked that race is. Um, and then also you know with the filters at the top you can see um you know which which races are on hilly routes which races are on say you know you're preparing for the Zwift wheels exactly you can actually find that course and see what races are on that course over the next uh seven days i think is is as far forward as you can see so okay cool so uh i think that's that's maybe uh i think that's really valuable info for for guys uh guys who are new to Zwift racing like victor uh <laughs> um so during if you if you're racing on swift um you often see in the in the like in the right hand column that someone has a new pb on uh on that course or someone has a uh won a won a sprint or someone had the fastest time on the kom um is this um do you, do you gain anything by it by by it? just uh Finishing a sprint first or, or going for a KOM? Um, it, some races do have like uh, intermediate sprints or, mm -hmm. you know, um, a KOM competition. Um, they're few and far between uh, those races, though. Um, they're usually like a series of races, um, but they're really fun. Like if you, if you can find a series of races, especially during the winter, um, I know there's one starting like now and doesn't finish until like the end of February. So uh, every week doing a Zwift race like that is pretty cool. Um, What's it called? Uh, I think it's the Swedish Zwifters League. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 starting in the the Bene Liga uh, tomorrow. So uh, that's also two months. So there probably will be uh, the the KOMs and the sprints, like you say. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's some people make it um, make it their aim. Uh, I know obviously winning the race is probably like the the best feeling, but you know if you've been consistent at, at being up there for the sprints or for the KOMs, um, you know that, that's just as prestigious as you know winning the KOM jersey at the Tour de France. Yeah, but then again, not really. Yet. <laughs> yeah, well. But then again, what? But then again, not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then again, not really. For sure, really? if you're in, in the B cat or something like that. Yeah, you still got to win the race, haven't you? <laughs> winner, winner is winner, we say in Dutch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ed, we've uh, we've been we've been uh, watching some of your uh, some of your live streams, um, and we hear you talk about uh, this is, and I think this is again uh, relates more to the to the uh, the World Championship and and uh, real tips that Victor can use. Um, you we hear you talk about the the slingshot effect. Uh, on your channel sometimes what is that and, and how does it work um so it's the way that the uh, the way the game works where um unlike in real life you can actually ride through people um but you, you, if, if some people say, try that in real life as well eh? <laughs> doesn't <yeah>. work <laughs> you, you can definitely um so the the draft is is very very strong if you if you use momentum so you know if you come into a certain section that's that's slightly downhill and then it kicks up the other side if you're at the back um and you uh you push some watts 
as you come into the bottom, you can come through the group. And then as you're coming out, say the top, as you're coming into the top 10 of the group, you really start your sprint and that kind of slingshots you out of the group and gives you maybe, you know, five kilometers an hour difference in speed when you actually leave the group. So you're not, you're not sprinting from the front, you're sprinting kind of from that 10th wheel position. So you get that, um, yeah, you get that slingshot really through off the front. So that's a bit how, how, how sprinting, how sprinting works in, uh, in Zwift also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although sprinting in Zwift is kind of like, um, you want to, Zwift responds very well to a high instant peak wattage. Um, so whenever I sprint, I usually do not that I'm the best sprinter, but <laughs> I usually, I usually give like a, say if it's a 15 second sprint, I'll, I'll kick a little bit with 18 seconds to go just just to spike the power a little bit and then that actually accelerates you a, just a tiny bit and that gives you just a little bit of leeway so that you don't have to sprint for another couple of seconds so it's almost like a surge small rest and then you go into your sprint so it just so keeps your power, your position. Your power is like is like a bit a bit like this and then back yeah okay yeah. um and obviously a poor sprinter and it's going to be difficult because the the finish of the worlds is obviously a very very long sprint but i think um you know the poor sprinters they'll just they'll just they'll just punch and their peak power will just go through the roof so it's very difficult um for someone like myself you have to kind of you have to play it a little bit more um you know smarter um by sprinting like that rather than just going for absolute peak power yeah, but but on a, you would also use the same tactic when it's uphill on Zwift. Um, an uphill sprint. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen how the race has been won on on the world's course, and it's going to be a difficult one with the sprint or rather the last. 200 meters are like on a flat bit of it's it's like false flat but you have that climb leading up to that bit um there is a possibility of leaving it late so that you do sprint on that flat bit but um i think from there it's just going to be every man versus himself um it's going to be a difficult it's going to be a difficult sprint if it's just going to be you know uh, a traditional sprint uh, and, and how how do you think the race is going to play out, like from start to finish? Um, so it's it's going to be a hard start. I'm sure you know the Zwift races are like usually very hard for the first three or four minutes, um, and then you're looking then at like it's probably gonna. I don't know whether teams. This is the thing how it's going to be different to like real world worlds where. You know, teams ride for for one rider, or teams will will ride to like, um, you know, wear the field down or something. Um, I would make the race as hard as possible. Um, going back to like what you say about like the 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 world tour or the 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 real life professionals. Um, the thing you've got is your engine, and you've you've got the ability to ride at a very high power output. For a long period of time so your your biggest trump card is actually to make it very hard for the sprinters who their threshold is like quite a bit lower so you want to make them ride as close to their threshold as possible for the whole race so that when they get to the finish they haven't got that that kick um yeah you basically just but, want to wear them out again, the thing is it's like you say the the you can ride through people and, and uh, drafting is so easy on Swift. It is easy, but the, the faster the group goes, the more power you have to put out. It's like a snowball effect. So you, although it, you have to watch what other people are doing in terms of their, their watts per kilo, you, you have an advantage in that when you're going over the climbs, you guys are strong enough to actually keep riding and a, a lot of the other riders even the even the best riders on zwift they don't have the sustained engine and that's where i do so well 
because I've got, you know, like you said, I I can do, you know, six watts per kilo for, for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. So that's what allows me to, to break the elastic. And that's what you have to treat it as. You have to treat it as whenever the race is getting hard or wh- whenever you go over the climbs, you yeah. need to you need to race after the climb, you know, keep racing. If you ease up, they just recover. And that's where they they do their thing best then is when they recover and they can save themselves for the finish. Um, yeah, you just don't want to, you don't want to give them an easy ride to the finish. Um, and if that means sacrificing, you know, a couple of riders who are just going to ride, you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes as hard as they can, just to keep that speed as high as possible, um, you know, that, then that's that's just going to be uh, that wearing down process. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't you think it will be a strange the World Championship because you have these Zwift racers that are so used to Zwift racing and they, um, I don't know so much about Zwift racing, but most of the time um, when when I see the races Jeff is doing, it's more or less the same uh, the same things are happening over and over again and the same uh, um, key points in the races uh, break or break the race um, but with with these world riders they will ride on Zwift as if it is a road race uh, don't you think this will make a, a strange and maybe interesting race that it, everybody will be all over the place because there will be totally different tactics yes um and just like you would do out on the road maybe where two or three nations would have a bit of a a chat and and say this is how you know we don't want to make it easy like you know the race is only an hour well a little bit over an hour um that there's almost there will be kind of two races i think so there'll be the race the 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 Zwifters and then the pros uh, we'll call it call it that um, the Zwifters are going to they're going to know how the game works they're going to know how to draft and they're going to know how to race it the way they race it the pros who are coming in if they haven't raced uh, with the with the Zwifters then they're gonna it's gonna look like um, basically the Zwifters are going to like feel like oh we can sit in and and like the pros are just gonna they're just gonna sit in as well because they they would not really know how to how to race it but I think you've almost got to take it to them because they're not going to do anything um they know how the game works and they're going to be completely happy to let the 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 draft and the blob do its thing and this is what the, you, you almost have it's all it's almost like a stalemate if you don't do anything and the race just kind of plods along until the last climb and then it's just a big old you know two minute sprint up the last hill the Zwifters are going to have it um or at least you know they that's what they want to happen um they're not gonna they're not gonna attack the race i don't think the Zwifters. the it's going to be up to the pros to make the race hard enough with their engine so that the Zwifters, who have traditionally got a lower threshold, a lower FTP, um, you want to make them struggle um, so that they can't have that big snap at the end. But it's going to be a difficult race, and it's going to be a close race, uh, I think. So the ideal tactic, if you if your your team were to be a uh, a team consisting of of pro riders, you'd say okay, um, well, like non zwifters uh, you say okay we pick we pick three or four guys and they they just ride as hard as they can with the with the four of them or the three of them they ride as hard as they can on the front of the bunch until 50 minutes in then we have like one or two guys who can try to attack at that point because the guys are going to be tired already the, the zwifters are going to be tired already and if that doesn't work we still have one guy for the for the final climb yeah, the interesting thing with with you guys is that you have Leo, um, and Leo is like he's the hot favorite to win it from from almost everybody I've spoken to. Um, so this is why you have an interesting hand to play, I think, because you you 
you've got you've got the best of both worlds you've got um you've got a rider like leo and then you've got you know victor you've got other guys who are you know pro level out on the road who can do other things um so you could race one way and leo could still be there at the finish to do you know what leo usually does where you know he tacks up the short climbs he's really good at the short climbs so um you have two two cards to play um a lot of nations don't actually have that what uh what is your what is your uh your if you if we run uh we're on the the subject of leo what is your uh like your top three pick for the for the race um in order or random <laughs> in order of course <laughs> and you can you can add two door course two dark horses right okay uh Well, I have to say, Victor, don't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw the test event uh, the day before yesterday. You don't have to say Victor. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can say Victor, but you don't have to. Um, well, one wild card, I think, could be... I think I've seen Daryl Impey on the start sheet. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, I, it's a difficult one with... with um, trying to call the the pro riders on the road and how they will do because you don't tend to see them doing it. So, um, yeah, I think Daryl and B could be a good wild card shout. Um, and then, yeah, Leo, I, I think I think Leo could have it. Uh, again, you know, if the race is hard enough and he's in his usual good shape, I think Leo could have it. Um Then I think uh, the American rider Holden Holden, uh, Holden Conner, yeah, um, and then Freddie Ovid, um, who is always up there, the Australian. Um, same team as same team as uh, Leo, right? Uh, no, Freddie Ovid actually rides for Wahoo Lacall. He's just signed okay. for us now, yeah. Um, So, yeah, three different three different um, nations fill in those podium spots. Um, but yeah, I think I think those three f for such a short climb. Um, so three Zwift three Zwifters on the podium. Well, this is it, isn't it? <laughs> like it, it's it's so difficult it's so difficult to 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 say because you know it's like saying it's like you know I don't ride on the track. But if I was to ride on the track, how how could you put me in the top three? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, you could, you know, I could surprise you. I could, I could do a good ride, but you know, for, I don't know because I wouldn't be able to call it. I I wouldn't know where to start. Um, do you know, I I never did an official race on the track, but still I have the world tower record on the track. <laughs> so there are possibilities. I also think, um, I don't know if you uh, noticed Jeff, uh, but uh, Ryan Gibbons is also participating and he was really good in the um, Tour de France, Swift, Swift Tour de France, I don't know. Yeah, but the uh, thing is, the thing is there were no Swifters in that Tour de France. I know, but he, he has a, a strong kick. Like he also can do for one like, minute. Yeah, like Pa and then, then he's finished. He, he, He can do one minute so hard on the rollers and he cannot do the same thing on the road. Um, he, he is strong on the road, but he was Stronger. a lot stronger on the rollers than he was on a, than he was on Swift. And he did, it was not with Swift racers, but he did a, a, a big amount of, of uh, Swift races in the first lockdown. Okay. So I'll put him, I'll put him in my top five. Yeah. Okay, man. Uh -huh. Uh, you have any more questions, Victor? Um, I had one, but I, I, um, I, I, mean, I uh, um, when when you're on the rollers, of course you need a good fan to pull you down. Um, just like in real life, not not on Swift. When you're on your rollers, what what are your your tips to do a one hour full gas effort? Or like hardware one hour tips. Hour effort? Yeah, well, you need yeah, you need a good fan. Um, you. Hopefully need to be by an open window. Yeah, maybe Jeff can can fan you down. 
Um, <laughs> um, personally, like simple things like you know having ice in your in your bidon um, and having like a, a cold wet towel maybe so you can. You know, it's it's only an hour, so if it's if it's dripping on you, it won't be a problem. But at least it's cold. Um, yeah, just just prepare for it like that because um, you know you don't know what. Uh, it's funny, like even though you're racing indoors, you don't know what weather you're gonna have on the day, and the weather can still affect you even when you're indoors. So if it's gonna be raining outside, that's actually good because the temperature will be a little bit lower. Um, but if it's a hot day, which obviously it's not gonna be in December. But you know, it's it's things to think about when when you go in full gas for an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I maybe have one more question, a bit off topic. Uh, maybe I'm 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 gonna also cut this out. But, um, just like a, a personal issue, uh, me and Victor have been discussing is like if you're in the if you're in the bunch, is it better to be in the back of the bunch or to be like halfway or because yeah I, i'm also like i did i think i did the last 60 days i did 40 races <laughs> 40 races on swift and I, you must be fit <laughs> uh, hey he's fitter than me and i'm normally normally it should be the other way around so but but i notice or i i i think i notice like after the first two three minutes where it's where it's on where it's on it's maybe there's 20, 30, 40 guys left, depending on the level of the field. And then you just draw back and, and, and sit there, relax. And, and if, if it says, uh, uh, mind the gap or close the gap two meters, you just like give it like two, three hard pedal strokes. And then uh, again, try to find the, the bottom of the, the range where you can, where, yeah, that, that, it helps you stays in the, stay in the in the pack. I think um, so. If the group is if the group is very big, um, stay uh, in the top twenty or thirty. Um, you know, if the group is say, yeah, if it's if it's big, it's gonna split. Yeah, it's gonna split. Um, just just stay near the front. Um, but but you always you always feel like you can put out less power like than than you think you can um you know zwift race is notoriously fast at the start and you sometimes feel like you know you're gonna blow up because you put you're pushing so hard but it's usually only for a short period of time if the group then splits and say the group is only 20 or 30 uh, let's say 20 25 you can actually sit at the back um i mean you can sit anywhere but if you sit at the back you can see everything and um, you can watch everybody's watts per kilo, and actually, um, it, there's no there's no benefit anywhere really with with the draft. As long as you're in the draft and it doesn't say, you know, five meters, and you've got to close the gap. Uh, as long as you're kind of within two meters, three meters uh, of the last rider, you'd be fine. Um, and always remember that the little surges. Um, to keep yourself in the group are actually better than than you know prolonged periods at high power because it's just the way the game works. The, the game responds really well to just these these surges to keep you in position. Yeah, yeah. Rather rather than just you know bashing bashing uh, the whole time. So okay, guys, I think uh, that's it. If if I don't know if anyone has anything to add. No, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks, thanks for thanks for your time, Ed. Thanks for your time, Victor. Thank you. It's been a been a Thank pleasure. You. See you tomorrow, man. You well, man. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Bye. Bye bye.